1.5 properties of limits. In this lesson we're going to continue what we started in 1.4. Uh, we're going to talk about some limits of rational functions, polynomial functions, the indeterminate form. We're going to look at some absolute value functions, some substitution, u substitution questions. There's lots of stuff in this lesson so make sure you watch to the end or you might miss out on something. So here we have um, the limit as x approaches b of a function. You simply plug in b and solve. As long as you aren't getting a zero in the denominator or a negative under a radical, then all is good. Now the properties of limits are listed in your textbook. And I'm just going to show you this little handout that I had for my students. It's, it's not very easy to see. The, the print is bad. But it talks about all the different properties of limits. And I love the way they sum it up here. The seven properties of limits can be stated verbally. I'll read them really fast. The limit of a sum is the sum of the limits. The limit of a difference is the difference of the limits. The limit of a constant times a function is a constant times the limit of the function. The limit of the product is the product. The limit, the limit of the quotient, the quotient limit is the limit of the denominator is not zero. The limit of a power is a power of the limit and the limit of a root is a root of the limit of the root exists. So there you go. It's much easier to understand the words than all this blah blah here. All it is saying essentially is that you can move this limit around to different parts to break it into little parts. So here's the sum of the limits or the the product of the limits. So you can break it up into parts and put limit in front of each of them if you want to. But normally you don't. It's just saying that these are the properties of the limits. So let's get into the mathematical part calculations of limits and uh, follow along. So polynomial functions, we talked about these. The limit as x approaches 2 of a polynomial function is basically plug in 2. So when you plug in the 2, remember you stop writing the limit. So if I substitute in 2 here, I'm just going to write it like this. So I have 4 times 2 is 8, minus 6 is 2 plus 1, and I get 3. That's as easy as it gets. For some rational functions, the limits, such as this one here, if I wanted to solve as x approaches 1, if I put in 1, I'd have 1 minus 4 is minus 3 plus 2. 1 minus 4 is minus 3 plus 2 is 1. So I have 1 on the top, and I put in 1 here, and I get 9. So I get 1 over 9. So you didn't have to factor it. You plug it in first to see if the limit exists, and if it does, you're done. This one is x approaches 3. I put in 3, I get 9 minus 9 is 0, divided by minus 4. So don't be upset if you have a 0 in the numerator. That's okay. The limit is just 0. This one, however, the limit is x approaches 1 of x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. And I think you'll remember this from last semester or even in grade 11. If you plug in 1 here, I would have 0 over 0. So 0 over 0 is a very special form. It's called the indeterminate form. The indeterminate form says you're not finished. You have to do some more calculation to solve. To find this limit, you're going to have to do a little bit of work. So as you recall, if we go back to this here, if I said, okay, well, I can factor this because the denominator is simply a difference of squares. So I have x minus 1 times x plus 1. And you would know that these would divide into each other. And now if I put in 1, I would get 1 half. Now do you remember when you had to sketch these in the, the last semester, you would have said, okay, so one, if I want to graph 1 over x plus 1, so let's say this is my function, x plus 1, we shift to the left 1. We also have an asymptote of y equals 0. And we have a function that comes down like this, 3, 1. And at 1, it is going to be at a half. But we know the function does not include the point. x equals 1 is not in the domain of this function. x cannot be equal to 1. So I actually have a hole there. So the limit as x approaches 1 here is a half. And remember, as in the lesson yesterday, that you don't, the function can still have a limit at a point 
that the original function is not defined. So the limit here is one half because this is the point one and one half. It doesn't, ex the point f at one doesn't exist, but the limit exists. So we want to know, make sure that the limit can exist even where the function is not defined. It's not defined, okay? So let's look at some other, other types of questions here. We have radical functions. So again, you want to check, you want to plug in that value and see if it works, right? You plug in zero. The limit as x approaches to zero, I have one minus one, which is zero over zero. So zero over zero, indeterminate form. Do more work. Do not leave that as your answer on the test. The teacher will laugh at you. So for radical functions, we can multiply by the conjugate. Remember we did that in the other lesson. So I'm going to multiply by x plus one plus one over the square root of x plus one plus one. And I didn't leave myself much room here, but I'm, I'm going to squeeze it in for you. Limit as x approaches zero. So expand this. What do you get? So remember, we just have to multiply these two and these two. So I get x plus one minus one over. And now I still have all this in the denominator though, right? And don't expand this right away because you're just going to divide that x out anyway. So if I do that, I'm going to have x, x divided by, what did I do here? x plus 1 minus 1. So I have x over x times root of x. So plus 1 minus 1, x is going to go into here. So these are gone. This is going to go in one time. And I put in 0 in the denominator. So if I plug in my 0 now, I'd have 1 over... Now I have the root of one is one plus one is two, and I get one half for my solution. So be careful when you're dividing out, make sure you don't say, well, the X one index, it's gone. They're not gone, it divides into itself one time, and I have a half. Now this one a little trickier, um, the limit as X approaches two. Now you know X minus two, it's probably a good idea for you to make a little sketch of what that looks like to understand it better. So if I put in, if I put in two here, you would say zero, and that would be wrong. Why is it wrong? Because the limit, that would be, well, let's draw it. So I've shifted it to the right. So it's going like this, right? So the limit as X approaches two from the right, and let's write that out. Limit as X approaches two from the right of the square root of X minus two is equal to zero. That's the limit from the right. Is there a limit from the left? No. So does not exist. There is no limit as x approaches 2. Okay, because the limit from the left doesn't equal the limit from the right. There is no limit from the right. Okay, so now we've got that out of the way. Let's take a look at a few factoring questions. So the limit as x approaches 3. So again, you plug in 3 and see what happens. Um, should that have been 3 or negative 3? Because I'm not going to get, I think it's supposed to have been negative 3. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, it should be negative 3. It doesn't make sense. If it was 3, I could plug it in and get an answer. If I put a negative 3, however, I'd get 0 over 0. That requires some factoring. So the limit as x approaches negative 3, typo, you ever do that when you're writing out a question from homework and you can't figure out why you're getting the wrong answer? It's because you copied it down wrong. Okay, so let's factor the numerator here. Well, it's the difference of squares, right? So my a is 1 plus x, my b would be 2. So I have 1 plus x plus 2, 1 plus x minus 2, and this is all over x plus 3. Well, you might see right away that this is going to be x plus 3. This is x plus 3, so this is going to divide into here one time. And I'm left with, let's plug in minus 3 now. So I have 1 minus 5 is minus 4. Okay, so a little bit of factoring can go a long way. This one, 
Oh, I have a complex trinomial. So I'm looking for a product of four and a sum of five. So remember, first times last. And product four, sum of five would be four and one. Four and one. And the coefficient is two. I put them over two and I reduce. So that's going to give me the limit as x approaches two of one x plus two. So I have x plus two times 2x plus 1. And in the denominator, uh, multiplies to minus 4, adds to negative 2. That's going to give me minus 4 and 2. So x minus 4, x plus 2. And these would cancel or divide into each other. And what happens now if I plug in 2? I get 5 over negative 2. So I get minus 5 halves. Do that right? Mm -mm -mm, mm -mm -mm. I plug in 2 up here, I get 4 plus 1 is 5. Oh, you know what? That was supposed to be on another negative 2. Oh, Miss Havrat. Because I think if you plugged in 2 here, you wouldn't have gotten a negative. So these cancel out, and I put a negative 2 is negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. And negative 2 minus 4 is minus 6, and that gives me 1 half. Sorry about that. Okay, now let's take a look at something that requires some u substitution. So in this question here, you could factor this denominator as a difference of cubes. You could. But I'm going to show you how to use substitution for a number of reasons. First of all, you will use u substitution later on in this course, and you will also use u substitution when you're doing integral calculus, when you're finding the integrals. So we're going to let, so we have, we have an x to the half here, and we have an x to the three halves. So if I say, let x to the one half be equal to u, then x to the 3 halves would be equal to, so I'd multiply by 3, right? So I get u cubed. Now the only thing you have to be careful about here is that your limit is for x approaching 4. So if x approaches 4, then u would approach, so I put in 4 here, and that would give me 2. So I need to change my limit to have, say, u approaching 2. So I'm going to just write it over here. So this is going to be the limit as u approaches 2 and for my root of x I'm putting in u. So I have u minus 2 and in the denominator my um, x cubed, x to the 3 half, sorry, is u cubed. So I have u cubed minus 8. And I'm sure you can see what we're going to do here. We're going to do some more factoring. The limit as u approaches 2 of u minus 2. And I'm going to put it in brackets because I'm going to have to divide it out. And this difference of cubes, u minus 2, remember you square the first one. You start with the minus and then everything else is plus. So I have u squared plus 2u plus 4. The u minus 2s divide in once. And when I substitute in u equals 2, I would get 1 over 4 plus 4 plus 4. 4, 8, 12. Okay, so let's take a look at another substitution one here. The limit, oops, let me slide this down here. The limit as x approaches 0 of x plus 8 to the 1 third minus 2. So this time we're going to let x plus 8 to the 1 third, so all of it, be equal to u. If I cube both sides, that's going to give me x plus 8 is equal to u cubed. And that means that x is going to be equal to u cubed minus 8. Now why did I do all that? Because I needed to, I need to substitute x for something related to u, and I'm replacing all of this one here with a u. So this is going to become u minus 2 in the top, and it's going to be u cubed minus 8 in the denominator. Now, I also need to check what happens for u if I put in u approaches 0. So as x approaches 0, what's going to happen to u? 
So I put in zero up here because I've replaced u by this. So put in zero for x and I get the cube root of eight, which is two. So I need to change my limit to u approaching two of, and now I'm going to plug in u minus two over u cubed minus eight. Okay, so that's the same factoring that I did in the, just in that last lesson, last question. And we should be able to do that pretty fast then, right? So we have u minus two, and we have u squared plus two u plus four. And we're gonna end up with the very same answer here. So I have one over four plus four plus four is one over 12, again. You never know it, right? They look the same, but they're so different. Okay, the last substitution one I'm going to do for you, and these are all from your textbook as well, is this one here, u to the 1, 6, minus 1. So let's um, let x to the 1, 6 equal u. We should say let as well. It doesn't do that in your book, but I think it's proper. So then what's, um, if x to the 1, 6 is u, what's x to the 1, 3rd? How would I get if I wanted to go x to the 1 6 to x to the 1 3rd, I would have to multiply this by 2, right? That would give me 1 3rd. So x to the 1 3rd is equal to u squared. Okay, so we also need to check as x approaches 1, what happens to u? u approaches, well, what's the 6th root of 1? That's also 1. So I don't have to change my limit here, but I will change it to u. So this is the same thing as the limit as u approaches 1, and one x to the 1 6th is u minus 1, you can't forget this part, and u to the 1 3rd is u squared minus 1. Well, that becomes a very easy question now, so you can see how helpful substitution can be. Put it in brackets, I have u minus 1, u plus 1. These divide into each other once, and now I plug in my 1, and I get one half as well. Okay, so the last one I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do a couple of examples at request from another student using um, the bracket function, or as we call it, the absolute value function. So when we're doing absolute value functions, you could see, oh, why can't I just divide this into this? Well, you can sort of divide it into that one if you remove the absolute value brackets. Now remember, the absolute value of x minus 5 is a function that goes like this. It's been shifted to the right 5 units. On this side, this is where x is greater than 5, and on this side we have x less than 5. So in order for us to evaluate this, we want to look at the two possibilities that can happen for x minus 5. In other words, if I, if I asked you something really basic like, where is x minus 1 equal to... Um, 3. You'd say, well, we could have x minus 1 is equal to 3, or the negative of x minus 1 equal to 3. Remember, you had to have the plus and minus because absolute value functions, it just means what is the absolute value of the number in the bracket. So you change the sign. So you have to be careful that you're using both of the possibilities here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about approaching 5 from the right and five from the left, because I want to know what the, the um, but we're dividing it. So this is just, I'm just talking about this exponent, the numerator here. So I want to know what would be the limit as x approaches five from the right. And if I do five from the right, that means I'm going to talk about x minus five over x minus five, right? from the right. So that means this is going to be positive. So I have a positive one and I have a negative one. I also have this one and I'll write it out at the same time before we evaluate because I want you to think about what we're doing here as taking the positive and the negative of the absolute value. Okay, so this is going to give me one, right? Five from the right Okay, so 5 from the right will be 1. If I put in something really small here, no matter what I put in, let's say I put in 7. 7 minus 5 is 2. 7 minus 5 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. If I put in 6, I'd have 1 over 1. 
if I put in 5.00001 over 5.00001 and I divide those, I'm also going to get 1. Where it doesn't work is when x is actually 5 and I have 0 over 0. So at 5 here, I get 1, like this. If I do from the left now, okay, so I'm, I'm breaking this down into from the left and from the right. I'm not actually evaluating it at 5. I'm getting really, really close. So if I come from the left side here, this is going to give me negative 1, right? This will divide into that end with a negative 1. And again, you can try some numbers as we come from the left. And you're going to get this. So 5 from the left, let's put in um, a 4. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Negative 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1. So this is what this graph looks like. Like this. So what's the limit as x approaches 5? The limit as x approaches 5 of this function, don't forget you must write the function out as well. We're going to have to say does not exist doesn't exist because the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right. Okay, I'm going to do one more, a little more complicated absolute value, and then we're going to be done for today's lesson. This is this one here, the absolute value of 2x minus 5 times x plus 1 over 2x minus 5. So remember that two, the absolute value of 2x minus 5, let's try to draw just this little function here. And of course, if you plug in five halves, you're going to get zero over zero. So leaving that aside now, if I had this, you would say, oh yeah, this is a function that is shifted to the right five halves, vertically stretched by a factor of two, so it's a little bit thinner. And we have, we want to know what happens when x is greater than five halves and x is less than five halves. So I'm going to break this again up into two parts. I'm going to do a limit from the left and a limit from the right. Okay, so a little bit different calculation. I want to know what is the limit as x approaches 5 halves from the right. And this time, I'm going to replace my absolute value with the positive answer. A positive bracket here, like this. And you can see that this will divide into this one. And when I plug in 5 halves, I would have 5 halves plus 2 halves is 7 halves. So what I'm graphing is a graph of x plus 1, x plus 1, but at 5 halves it's going to be, 5 halves is 2 and a half, so I'm going to be at 3, uh, 2, 4, 6 halves, 7 halves. So I'm going to be right here, and it's going to be a line going like this. So this is going to be 7, sorry, sorry, this is 5 halves, and this height here is going to be 7 halves. So that's when I use from the right. Now what's the limit from the left? Limit as x approaches 5 halves from the left is going to be the negative of 2x minus 5 times x plus 1. I've got lots of room, so I'm really making it big now. Over 2x minus 5. These divide out, and I'm graphing negative x minus 1, negative x minus 1. But what happens at 5 halves? 5 halves plus 2 halves is 7 halves, negative 7 halves. So I have um, from the left is going to be negative 7 halves, 2, 4, 6, 7. So I'm here and it has, um, we have the slope of negative x plus 1, so it's going to have negative slope. It's going to go through this way, like this. And you can see that the limit from the right is not equal to the limit from the left. So for this one, the answer is does not exist. Does not exist because the limits are not the same. Now that was a very long lesson. I hope you got something helpful for you out of it. And don't forget to subscribe.